You know the standard template library. There is a single C++ pattern that made the whole library run 30% faster. Empty base optimization. If you're ready for some template magic and deeply technical C++, let me explain how it works. First of all, we need to look at how the compiler is handling empty classes. So here we have created an empty class, which basically contains nothing. And here we're using an array out of that empty class. The main point here is that each object in C++ needs to be uniquely identifiable, which means that this array cannot be zero size. So the point here is that even though the class here is empty, the array will still have some size. And even the class itself will have some size as we might see here. So we go to compiler, we just uh, build the code, and here it's also complaining that we're not using it, but anyways, and then we run it, and we see that the size of this empty class still is one, even though there's nothing inside. Now let's look how this is behaving with some additional classes involved. Here we have a class which contains an integer, that's why it's called int class, and it's derived by the empty class which we have created above. And we have a class which also contains nothing, and it's also derived by the empty class. Here, the idea is to see how much size is used for those classes. So we see here still the empty class, the int class, and the empty derived class, and we will look into how much storage they take. So we run the code, and we see the empty class still has one storage, and here is the surprising part. The integer class has four bytes of storage, and the empty derived class has one byte of storage. So let's, let's drill down what that means. The empty derived class takes one byte of storage and the empty class also takes one byte of storage. This is due to one optimization in the compiler, which is called empty base optimization. The compiler is allowed to squash the memory of the two classes together, to squash the empty class and the empty derived class or the empty class and the int class. So only um, the memory of uh, size one or in the int class size four is actually needed to put the object into, uh, into the storage. Here's an example where this empty base optimization can be used to make your code more efficient. So here we have a list implementation, something that can be rather common. And the list consists of some internal nodes and we do have a pointer to the beginning of the list. And we do have some user defined allocator function. So the user can use this list and use the template parameter alloc to define a functor which will later be used to allocate new elements of the list as the list grows. So this is some rather common implementation um, and that the user can provide some allocator also does make sense um, because usually the user knows best how to allocate the memory. But here we run already into a problem or into something that is not as efficient as it could be. Because usually the allocator function here is something that doesn't require any storage because it doesn't have data member. Usually alloc is only a functor, so it only contains functions in how to do stuff, but it doesn't contain any real data members. So let's try to optimize this list using the empty base optimization and to get rid of some of the overhead that is inside. The first, um, let's say a little bit naive implementation would be to move the allocator function as a base class to the list. This would already get rid of the memory overhead because now the compiler is allowed to stuff the memory of alloc into this list and to optimize the complete memory. Um, but there are some problems with it. The main issue here is that the interface of the alloc function is leaking. This means that if, for instance, you have here inside of the allocator function, a function called init, for instance, and your list function also provides init, in this case, you have two init functions on the same level. And in this case, um, you could not compile the list because, as I said, the allocator interface here is leaking. A better approach is to hide the allocator interface in the first node. So here we are creating a struct, which is the struct P, and the struct P, which is never used outside of list, um, is using uh, the empty base optimization to derive from the allocator. And here 
we are just allocating then a node um, and calling this one P as the head of the list. So this uh, is already quite good because here we have now the empty base optimization. So we're using less memory and also the list is uncompromised in terms of the interface because the list itself is not deriving from anything. Um, only the part of the P is deriving from the allocator. So also the interface remains clean. Obviously, this is some boilerplate code and might make your library a little bit harder to understand, but it's still worth the effort because you're saving loads of memory and loads of uh, runtime if you're doing it like that. But we are C++ developers after all, so we want to have something reusable. And it's not good that we need to do this on a case-by-case -case basis for our classes. So we can just use a template. Here the template is called base optimization. And here we are basically um, deriving from something that is the base. And we also have some member that we can stuff into the template. And now the implementation of the empty base optimization in the list gets rather easy because here we only use the head, which is the member into which we want to push the memory. And here we have the allocator and we say the hat itself should have the type notes, uh, uh, node pointer. And here we are basically only using the template, instantiating the template with the allocator and are already done with the empty base optimization. This is something that you will find a lot in the standard template library. I hope you learned something today about empty base optimization and the more technical side of C++. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you want to keep watching, I think this is the one that might interest you. And as always, enjoy coding.